Hi friends, it's Derek here and talking with friends people making yet another try at this video in which I discuss the numerics of things, I guess. I'm reflecting on this notion that reality is basically um, that it's an eight dimension build and that the the most sort of the base the base of the of reality physics is eight. Okay? It's something that I've been reading about lately. And my take on it is, well naturally, first of all, we're dealing with dimensions and dimensionality. It's important to remember what that means. So why are we talking about dimensions being non-dimensional themselves? Why don't we talk about dimensions as being, instead of 8, 3 by 3 by 3 by 2. Or, what I actually am thinking is, 3 by 2 by 2 by 1. And, I've just been sort of musing about possible ways to understand the grand theory of everything, basically. Like, the real grand theory of everything. The real philosophical understanding that underpins the mechanics of all reality. And it's there for a philosopher to figure out first, as always. Philosophers figure out everything important first. You know, scientists come later on and go, Oh, look at this philosopher's... Well, I'm sorry, now everyone takes it seriously because it's science. Why, like because you got on a lab coat? Yeah, pretty much. And, uh, thank you. But, you know what I appreciated? The, uh, the physics overview thing I watched the other day on YouTube. It included philosophy as one of the branches of the physics. Smart scientists want to take philosophy in as their own. Biology doesn't want anything to do with science, with philosophy, because biology knows it's in trouble. It doesn't withstand the same kind of scrutiny as the other sciences do. It's sort of, it's all inductive. So, anyway, that's not even here. Right um, here's what I'm thinking for dimensions. You've got time and space. You also have, which you might also call metaphysics and physics. Time, the passage of time combined with the ability to render uh, real-time experience into objects that are representative of some aspects of the experience that are worth communicating, I guess. Alright, so that that compresses one of the levels of distinction is time and space. Another one is representational and experiential. So there's two and two right there. Now, there's additionally put, get, and receive. Put, get, and receive comprise the three manifestations of reality that link to the other. That brings us to the seven already, right? The other thing I was thinking was like um, level of you know meta frame status. So what level is this at? At what level of, of Eighth dimension is, is its relationship to a meta, basically, to a meta frame. So, okay, let's review. We've got time and space that those two dimensions are prerequisites for the dimensions of experience and representation. Experience requiring both time and space in real time, and representation requiring both time and space abstractly, such that um, you have a turn based understanding of time and representational aspect of things, whereas you have a real time understanding of time in the experiential aspect of things. You have a um, 
you have so, sort of an equivalency in terms of of distinction between objects. That the distinction between objects is experientially understood in space. It's experientially understood in the experience dimension and is uh, referentially understood in the metaphysical dimension. So a word is constrained is conscribed by its definition in the same way that an object in space is conscribed by its nature. Um, if you bump into it with your foot, well, you've come to understand that in a more unpleasant way than perhaps is necessary. Possibilities, frustrating. Possible ways to look at it. I thought I was onto something earlier, and then I sort of fizzled out and didn't go anywhere. I couldn't put it all together. Here's like the card game. So, 